Hello everyone, this is Dawn, and I'm super excited to be here at Honey Bee Stamps. Today I've got a fun one for you. I'm going to show you how to take one design and piggyback off of it to create several designs for mass production. Now mass production is not always my favorite because I get bored making the same design over and over, so this is perfect if you're like me. You know, you need variety, even in mass production. All of the cards that I'm creating today will be using the Scandinavian Christmas stamp and die set. And for the first couple of cards, we're also going to be using the Kaleidoscope 3D embossing folder. Now, as I mentioned in the title, all of the designs are going to piggyback off of each other, but they all feature these die cuts and we need a lot of them. Normally, I think it's quicker to stamp and then die cut my pieces when I only need a couple of die cuts. However, like I said, we need a lot. So what I like to do for this method is die cut a bunch of die cuts, die cut them all at once, and then I create jigs to do my stamping. Now I'm taping all of these together so that they will come off in one piece after I'm done die cutting, and then I can just take that whole sheet of dies and uh, place it onto another sheet of cardstock and die cut more. So it just makes it as if it's one full die instead of a bunch of separate dies. Again, this is just a time-saving tip, and if you prefer not to tape them down, then by all means don't. Now, I like to create jigs because it allows me to stamp uh, all like images all at once, and then also lets me perfectly center the stamping in my die cut. Once I've got a bunch, I'm just going to use up any of the uh, open space here on the paper by cutting some more individual dies. Once all my die cutting is done, I've separated them all into little piles here, and I've cut down some panels here. These are two inches by three inches. I'm gonna use these to create my jigs. Now you could use the waste from where you die cut your pieces from. However, I put mine so close together that it wasn't very strong anymore, and I don't think it would hold up long term. This way I can group like items together, items that I would typically color the same, and then I can only pull out those items when I need them. I'll be using Distress Oxide to do all my stamping today. So for one of the sets of greeneries here, I'm going to be using Rustic Wilderness, Mowed Lawn, and Evergreen Bow. And if you've ever watched any of my lives, you know that one of my favorite techniques is using ink daubers to apply my inks to solid stamps. And I'll do this with oxides, the regular Distress inks, and even regular dye inks. I love the way that I can get a beautiful color blend of multiple colors on a solid stamp by using the ink daubers to apply the ink. You can see here I've laid down a layer of mowed lawn first, then I'm just hitting some of the areas randomly with the rustic wilderness. And then I'm going to come in and add a little bit of the evergreen bow. I like this method because it gives me a beautiful blend with soft transitions between all of the colors. Now we're going to use the same inking technique for all of our stamping, so I'm going to show it to you here, and then that way I don't have to show you all of the stamping later. And although we're using these to create the negative space to insert our dies into for our next round of stamping, we can use these pieces as our first die cuts. I'm lining up my dies over the stamped image, and this is going to make sure that the die cuts, the stamping will be perfectly centered in our die cuts when we replace them. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a second. You'll notice that I am not removing my stamps from the misty door. It's important that those stay exactly where they are. Okay, so now we have our jig. We're gonna pop our dies into the empty space there and then just commence stamping. I'll ink my uh, stamps up here just like I did before. And you can see here that they are perfectly centered in the die cut. Then I can just replace with another and continue stamping out all of my die cuts. Every now and then I'll switch up the amount of one color or the other just to give it a little variation. And you can see how quickly this goes now. I can just keep replacing with a new fresh die cut and stamping down. And then once I'm done with the, all of my die cuts for this jig, I'll just grab another one and create my next one. So here you can see I've done a couple already and now I'm setting up the jig for my pine cone and my branch. I like to group them by color like I mentioned. And this one I'm using ground espresso, gathered twigs, and then I'll add a little bit of brushed corduroy in there as well. But as before, I'm going to stamp first 
and then die cut to create my negative space that I can drop all my other die cuts into and do my stamping. And like I mentioned, I can keep these with my stamps and dies, and then I can use these over and over again. So once all of my pieces have been uh, stamped, I'm ready to start creating a card with them. And I'll have all of the colors that I use linked in the video description below. We're going to start with the first card. Now this card features nine little floral clusters laid out in a grid. And this is the one that all of the other cards are going to piggyback from. I wanted to group all of the individual little clusters together and ground them. A little bit of texture in that background panel is perfect for this. Of course, I grabbed the Kaleidoscope 3D embossing folder. It is my absolute favorite embossing folder of the moment. I'm using 110 pound Nina Solar White cardstock. I've spritzed it lightly on the front and the back with just plain water, and now I'm centering it in my folder. I'm gonna send that through my Spellbinders Platinum machine, and now you can see all of this beautiful detail we have. It's gonna be very subtle, but add a lot of interest to that background. And like I mentioned, I made sure to center this. Because we are going to be using a grid layout, it's important that your pattern is centered. If it's not, you could always trim a little bit, but um, try your best to get it centered. Okay, so I have a separate panel here that I have divided into three equal parts, both vertically and horizontally, giving me a nine square grid. And I chose the nine square grid because it follows the rule of thirds as well, which is just a surefire way to make sure that you end up with a balanced composition. You can use any of the intersecting points of the lines or any of the lines to place your focal images or your sentiment. So this will help me when I go to place my sentiment after I place each of my elements within their own little grid square. Now, if you didn't wanna use all nine, you can combine any of the squares to make one larger square or you could go vertically um, down the page. So you could combine all of the upper squares, then combine all the middle squares, and then combine, combine all of the bottom squares. And that would give you a balanced composition as well. And again, you could use those intersection points to place your sentiment or one of the lines to place your sentiment. So like I said, it's just an easy way to make sure that your composition in the end will be balanced. And then I'm going to sit and I am going to create nine little arrangements. They're going to be very simple. Um, and I'm going to try to make sure again that I balance the elements across the design. So I wouldn't want to put like all one color across the top and then another color over on the bottom. I want to make sure that I am equally distributing the color across the background and that I'm equally distributing the size of the elements across the entire card. So I don't want to make it seem too top heavy or too bottom heavy. I don't want anyone to attract too much attention, if that makes sense. I want the card to be viewed as a whole that your eye just kind of travels around instead of pulling all of the attention to one thing. Here, my sentiment is really going to be my focal point. These are going to act more like a backdrop. So by making sure that I balance each of my little arrangements and then distribute them equally across the background, I know that uh, no one will pull too much attention. So you can see here, I'm just creating these little simple arrangements. And I am doing this on my grid background instead of my final background. And I'll show you how we're gonna transfer these with no problem here in a second. But the reason that I'm doing it on this instead of my final background is because I didn't wanna to have to erase pencil marks. Now. Did I have to make pencil marks? Not necessarily. If I had created all of my little arrangements individually and glued them together and then adhered them as one to the background, I could easily separate these into nine little squares visually. But for demonstration purposes, I wanted to show you how you grid it out. And also, I like to apply mine with a mix of liquid adhesive directly to my background and then mixes of foam adhesive as well to pop portions up. So for me, it's gonna be easier to use my grid and make sure that everything is um, balanced, then pick it all up at once, and then start adhering it in layers. And again, I will show you that here in just a second. Now, you don't be afraid to cut down some of your pieces if you want to tuck some in here and there, but they're a little too large. Cut them down, no problem. Um, you'll notice that sometimes I swap out for maybe a different colored piece. Uh, if I feel like, okay, I don't have any 
I'll do it right here. I don't have any really deep green up at the top, so I'm gonna switch out that one. It was a little too close in blue to the other piece, so I wanted a little extra contrast. Then I'm going to decide, do I want the heat embossed bows? Do I want red bows? Um, and I'll, in, in the end, I'll give you a hint. I ended up with the red bows. <laughs> but you can see here, I trimmed that little piece and added a little bit more, and I thought that that worked out well. So again, just play around. This gives you the freedom to really build each individual uh, piece without committing to it until you can see all of them as a whole. Okay, so overall, I like the balance of this. I like all the elements that are in there. So I'm gonna take my Distress Embossing Pen and add a few uh, special details to the elements. Now I'm going to, again, make sure that I distribute this evenly around the card because the sentiment is going to be our focal point. So I wanna balance these special details. I'm taking that Distress Embossing Pen, and this is the bullet nib, and I'm gonna add a little um, clear gold glitter. This is from Wow, and it's got a clear base of embossing powder with gold glitter in it. I'm gonna add that to my flame here on the candle, and then I'm also going to add that to the berries and to the bells. So again, it's equally distributed across all of the elements. And of course, this is completely optional, but I do find that uh, most times with these clean and graphic designs, a little element of extra wow really helps to uh, elevate the design. All right, so now time to adhere. I'm gonna use some press and seal. And I've made sure that everything is where I want it to live on my final layout. I'm gonna take this piece of press and seal and I'm going to lay it right over my entire card front. I'm gonna press that in place, and then I like to use my bone, my bone, <laughs> my bone folder to make sure that it is grabbing all of the die cuts. We've got layered pieces here, so sometimes like that little uh, pine cone there, sometimes it won't grab it because it's underneath other elements. So I just like to make sure that it's grabbing all of them. And then I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm gonna create a hinge. I'm going to firmly press the press and seal to my surface here. And this is gonna make sure that it is securely stuck in place. And then I can fold the entire sheet back on itself, creating a hinge. So here you can see I'm gonna lift it up and fold it back. And I'm gonna swap out my background here. I've paid attention to where I've put it on the grid mat. I'm gonna swap that out for my final background, put it right back in place. And I'm gonna use some low tack tape just to hold that down to the table so it doesn't move. Remember, I put all of that work into uh, intricately making all those little arrangements. I don't want them moving around on me. And I certainly don't want my card to shift and me to glue something in the wrong spot. So you can see here, I can fold it right back over and everything is going to be exactly where it should be. And now it's just time to adhere. I like to use two different heights of foam. I'm using the Honeybee Stamps white foam strips and I can cut these down to any size I need. They're a little thinner the scrapbook adhesive squares, and then the Honey Bee Precision Tip Glue. And I like to start with the very bottom layer. I adhere that with liquid adhesive. That's gonna be flat to my card surface. You'll notice that I am just putting glue at the base of each element. That way, if I want to, I can come in later and add a little foam adhesive under the tips to pop those up. Then I'm gonna fold that press and seal back down over my panel, and I'm gonna press it in place, hold it there for a second or two. You wanna give that glue time to actually adhere to that background panel. And then I'm going to slowly pull the press and seal back. Now, everything that's glued down will stay on the background panel, and everything that's not will come right up with that press and seal. So I'm gonna fold it back, and we're gonna work on the next layer. And each one is going to be a little different. Sometimes I'm gonna use a thin foam, sometimes I'm gonna use liquid adhesive, and other times I'm gonna use a combination of both. That's why I flip back and forth, because I'm looking at what element is going down next and where I need to glue it flat and where I can actually pop it up. And I'm working my way down. I'm not worried about gluing each little arrangement in its entirety. I'm just kind of working my way layer by layer down the card. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to take this method. You could absolutely glue each individual little arrangement together and then pop them up on your card base individually. But again, I like that mixture of um, having some glued flat, having it pop up in some places. 
I just think it adds a lot of interest and texture to the card. But either way, whichever is easiest for you. I will say that this method of adhering is great if you like to do layered die cuts, if you like to create arrangements and things of that nature. This is a game changer for sure, and it makes creating arrangements with multiple die cuts like this so much easier. And you'll occasionally have a piece that uh, falls off or that you pull off because the adhesive is stuck to your finger. <laughs> but that's okay because those ones are, they're, sometimes they're easier to just individually place, like the candle there. And you'll just keep going back and forth until all your elements are adhered. Now, here's where I decided to swap out my silver bows there for the red bows. I knew that my sentiment was going to be white heat embossed on red and that I was going to use a red card base and I felt like the red bows just tied in better and I liked the contrast that they provided. And I adhered those all with a little foam adhesive. Again, you'll see this one down here. I contemplated putting a bow on this one, but I also know that I'm going to put my sentiment here and it's going to be white heat embossed on red. So that's going to provide that shot of red there on the lower right. So I don't really need a red bow there. And for that sentiment, we're going to be using the all is calm, all is bright sentiment included in the Scandinavian Christmas. I'm going to treat my cardstock with the powder tool here. This is the rabbit hole designs embossing powder tool. I'll stamp that in Versamark and then heat emboss that in white. I'm going to use the coordinating die to die cut this and I will cut it several times and then glue those one on top of the other just to provide a little more stability for that sentiment because we're going to pop it up on foam tape and it's going to go over those other elements that are popped up on foam tape. So this will just make it a little more strong. I'll just adhere this panel to the card base and put my uh, sentiment in place there and then I noticed that the upper right hand corner needed a shot of red. Every other element has red in it, and so I decided to add another cluster of berries to this, and we'll just tuck this in right there. Super easy. So now we have this beautiful card, but we also have the opportunity to create nine more cards using each one of these little individual arrangements as the focal point. So let me show you how we're going to do that. And these are very simple yet very elegant, and they're really easy and quick to pull together. I've gone ahead and created another embossed background because we're going to use pretty much the exact same background treatment. And I'm going to create two here for you. I'm going to do one with white on white. I love white on white. And then we're going to do one with the white on the red, just like our first card. I'm going to use the circle here in the Scandinavian Christmas set. Now this is supposed to be a frame. It's got a die that cuts out the outer edge and the inner edge, but they're separate. So that means that I can use this as say a label. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to heat emboss this in gold embossing with gold embossing powder and then I'm going to use the coordinating die just the outer edge and we're going to die cut that. And just like I did with the sentiment I am going to cut three of these and then stack them one on top of the other. Okay so if you are mass producing all the same design you could do these steps all right now and have all of your card bases pretty much ready. I'm going to use my first card as my reference and for my first one I am going to do the little candle motif. Now you can make any adjustments or changes or again if you just wanted to go quick just use the exact same arrangement. I went ahead and did my sentiments as well so they're ready to go. I heat embossed it in gold to match our uh, little label and now I can just start adhering everything again. And because I'm going with that clean and simple design I am using my grid mat to make sure that my label there is centered directly uh, vertically on my card and I'll build up my little arrangement. Now because this candle is the whole arrangement is heavier on the right side than it is the left I'm going to add my sentiment in the circle but to the left of my arrangement. This is going to create a nice balance through the center of the card. And then for the second card we're going to do uh, white on red and I'm going to use the, the little pine, those aren't pine, looks like mistletoe and pine cone arrangement. Now this one is fuller, it's more balanced, so it's going to be perfect for a center um, motif, right? So I can put it right directly in the center of that label and that leaves me room at the lower two-thirds of the card to place the sentiment. So again, using that rule of thirds, if I were to imagine a grid there and the card was split into thirds, that's where my sentiment would run. And that's going to give me perfect balance for this clean and simple card. 
Okay, so now we have three designs based off of that first initial idea. Let's switch it up again. We're just gonna keep building on that original foundation. Now we're gonna take that one motif and we're gonna expand it a little bit and we're gonna switch up the background. Okay, because we're piggybacking, we're gonna grab this bells. This is our good starting point. We've got a nice little base here, but we can expand this. So we're just gonna add to our arrangement here, make it a little bit larger, make it like a swag. I've die cut another circle here. This time I stamped it with Distress Oxide and Festive Berries. And now I've used the potted poinsettias as our sentiment. Something a little bit different, switch it up just a little, but we're still following the exact same formula. So you can see here that I added one sprig on the right side. So I added a little bit of mistletoe to this. It's already made it a little bit fuller, but we can keep going, right? You could stop here. But what if we add a little bit to the top and a little bit to the bottom and make it a swag like a semicircle? So here I've added a little extra to the bottom, a little extra to the top. I added a pine cone in there, so I felt like it needed a little brown. So I just took a little piece of one of those twigs and added it to the top, and now it's perfectly balanced again. Now it's ready to be adhered. The original arrangement is all one piece, so I've just removed that, and I'm going to use the press and seal trick again. Yep, you can use this on any anything that you're trying to adhere that uses multiple die cuts. I'm gonna tape my circle in place. I'm gonna lay that press and seal over the top there, create that hinge and flip my layer back, add my adhesive and then flip it back and press it in place. So do you see how easy and how convenient using the press and seal and the hinge method is? No more, you know, accidentally getting things put down in the wrong place. Just place them where you want them. Put down that press and seal, create the hinge, and pull it back. Everything will go right back to its original position. Now I can just add that original, that original arrangement right on top. Just adding my foam adhesive to pop it up a little bit, and she's done. Perfect. Now, I do want to add a little bit of something extra extra because, you know, that's just what I do. <laughs> so I'm going to add snow to this one. Last time we added gold glitter. This time we're going to use Wow Puff White Powder. This stuff, I use it on almost all of my holiday cards. I'm going to use that uh, embossing pen again. And I'm going to just add a little bit of Versamark to the areas I want to apply the snow. I love using the pen for this because I can be very targeted on where I add my snow details. And you might want to do this in two layers. Um, you can't really see where you're putting down the embossing powder, so <laughs> it helps to just put some down, then melt your embossing powder so you can see how much you actually have on your project, and then add a little bit more as you go. You, remember, you can always add more. You can't take it away. So, Okay, like I mentioned, we're going to use the exact same layout, but we're swapping the background treatment. So I've pulled out the Honeybee Stamps Nordic Winter Stencils. This uh, is a two-pack. One of the patterns is a more open pattern. The other one is a tighter pattern. We're going to use the tighter pattern here. And I'm going to apply some texture paste through the stencil onto some craft cardstock. I love white on craft, especially at Christmas. It has such a woodland vibe, and it's one of my favorites. For my texture, I'm gonna use the paper texture paste from Finnebear from Prima, and this is my favorite for creating snow texture. I know there's some other stuff on the market, and I think the Tim Holtz, what is it, their Snowfall, is a good one as well if you have that on hand. But it just has this beautiful, fluffy uh, texture here. You can see it's not super smooth, it's not overly chunky, and when it dries, it stays pretty flexible. So I just really love this stuff. I just pick up some on the back of my palette knife, put it onto the paper, and then start spreading it around. I do mine haphazardly. Uh, I'm not worried about getting a full edge-to-edge -edge coverage, but if that's your thing, if that's what you like, then by all means go for it. I like a more broken, a uh, little more broken pattern. And then when I lift it off, I'm going to lift it straight up so as not to smear the paste underneath the pencil, the pencil, the stencil. And then I'll wash this right away. And once that's dry, all we have to do is adhere our card. So I'm going to use some liquid adhesive to adhere this panel, which I've trimmed down to four by five and a quarter, and I'll adhere that to a white card base. And then I'm going to use some foam sheets, some Honeybee Stamps foam sheets to apply my focal image to the center of my card. Um, I'm actually going to put it slightly, slightly higher than center. 
So it's going to be in that upper third area. And now we have another card that looks uniquely different from the others, yet it was piggybacked off of the exact same design and uses pretty much the same layout as our very elegant cards. So let's take a look at one more way to switch up that focal point. Okay, this time again, we're gonna use the exact same layout. I've done another background with that texture paste, stamped out and die cut another one of those circles using that same image, that same sentiment, excuse me, from the potted poinsettia set and we're going to adhere this in the center of our card. This time I'm going to take and I'm going to create a little floral swag on the bottom of the card and then I'm going to mirror that at the top of the card. And this is just another very easy way to create balance. Just mirror whatever you do at the bottom at the top. Here I'm going to go very simple. I've got a sprig of mistletoe. I've added a pine cone and then for the bottom I'm going to add a little bow. For the top, we don't want to do another bow, so instead what I've done is I've again used a piece of that mistletoe, added a pine cone, and this time I'm just going to add that pop of red using the berries. Even though it's not exact because it's mirroring, mirroring that use of red, it does act to balance it. So very simple again, very pretty, very easy to do. And we have finished. I really appreciate you guys hanging in there. I know this was a long one, but let's review the cards that we made and the little journey that we went on. All right, so our first design here, we used the grid system to create these little floral arrangements. And we had all of these options now to piggyback off of and create more cards using those as our focal points. I love that card. But I also love all the ones that came from it. So here we use the exact same color scheme, we use the same background treatment, and we pulled one of the motifs, used it in the center of our little label there, and added our sentiment underneath, a little bit of gold sparkle. So this one used all the same elements, but instead we chose to highlight one of our arrangements. From there, we decided let's change up our color scheme a little. All the same background treatments, this time we went with a white base. We still used our gold glitter, but we swapped to an all white on white with gold, and I really love this one too. Um, the elegance of this one is very beautiful. And of course we had to make another one because I like to make things in pairs when it comes to cards. Um, just another version, this time we used the candle, and because it was more right heavy, we just moved it over to the right added our sentiment on the left, whereas with the bells, we put them on the left and put our sentiment on the right. From there, we decided to switch it up a little bit more and change out our background. So this time we changed our embossing folder out for a stencil. We added some snow this time instead of glitter. I love the woodland look as I'm having a hard time choosing my favorite here, you guys. I would love to know what your favorite is because I'm, I'm torn. I love the craft in the white. I love the woodland feel. This is how I decorate in my family room for Christmas. So this one has my heart. Whereas in my formal dining room, I do the mixed metals. So that very classy white on white, that one is, it has my heart too. So I don't know. I don't know how to choose. But again, we did the mirroring technique on the first one. And then again, use the exact same color treatments, exact same background treatment, except for this time we just built on our original arrangement. We extended it at the top and the bottom, creating a little crescent. And it would be super easy to continue this all the way around to create a wreath. And I do have one to show you that's a bonus one. We, I don't have the video making this one, but like I mentioned, you could certainly continue filling this all the way around to create a wreath. And that is what I did for this one. So I had some stamped out in a little bit different color scheme. So I just continued to fill all the way around, created a wreath. And in the background, I used that same stencil, but instead of a texture paste, um, I used a clear glitter paste. So this one is very subtle, but has a lot of sparkle. Then I added some glitter to my wreath. And again, I like the woodland feel of this one as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I really hope that you picked up some tips, some tricks, maybe learned something new in the video. If so, let me know in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.